What's up, just friends? Welcome back to the grind. Okay, new day. Playing as white. We're gonna play the opening that we're gonna use to get to a thousand elo, the London system. <laughs> By the way, if you're tired of seeing me play the same two openings, the London system is white and the Karokan is black. Wish I could say I was sorry, but I'm planning on using these two openings to basically get me to a thousand, so we're gonna be stuck watching these for a while. Okay, now that we got that PSA out of the way. Uh, okay, so it looks like he's trying to prevent uh, bishop f5 there. Uh, I'd say that's okay. I'm expecting knight f6 next. Uh, one of these. Uh, I don't like this move. Um, I think the move here is c3 to prevent uh, the fork on c2. I'm pretty sure that's the move. Uh, I've been a victim to this one a handful of times, and it's really annoying. Next, I'm expecting g5, so I'm just going to make a little hole. Okay. I think now is actually a reasonable time. To play e5. Actually, no, I can't do that because he can just play f6. So, I believe I have to develop the knight and go d2. I think as soon as he plays knight f6, I'm going to play knight e5. Also, it's probably reasonable to push c4 here at this point. Actually, yeah, it's probably better just to play c4 since he's blocked in his light square bishop. So, I'm actually just going to do that. And he decides to play knight e7, which is very different. I think he's trying to prevent knight e5. Ah, uh, you know, I think I actually kind of blundered here. I think this... Um, I have to be careful here. I want to make sure that I don't blunder, because I just opened up uh, knight b4 here. Uh, which is a little problematic. Yeah, because if he goes knight b4... I'm not going to have a great way to stop the fork here. I actually do need to be careful. I did kind of blunder. Um, I think I have to play a3 because I kind of blundered c4 here. I probably could take, but I don't know. I think b4 is going to be worse. Let me think about this. Maybe I just go for the trade. Maybe I just go for the trade on e5, and then we can just trade off knights or something. Hmm. It's either a3 or knight e5. I think knight e5 is better. Yeah, knight, e knight e5 is better because if he goes b4, I can just take his queen. And he basically wins a rook, which I'm not too concerned about. I'm going to try 95, and I guess it's just okay to trade these two pieces off, and then I'll play a3. Yeah, a bit of a blunder on that last move. c4. I think I forgot the b4 threat there. Okay. Now the question is, do we take with the pawn or do we take with the bishop? I know it might seem obvious to just try and take with the bishop, but I think there may be a case to be made to take with the pawn and maybe i'm overthinking this but if i take with the bishop he pushes f6 and then i sort of just lose a tempo but if i take with the pawn i can more or less just leave that piece there um only problem is is that it'll be undefended but 
I guess we'll just be good citizens and do an equal trade. Mm, I wouldn't be surprised if he takes uh, c4 at this point. The knight e7 move was like very unconventional. I don't think I've seen someone play that yet. Yeah, okay, so this is what I was talking about. So... I wonder what the best place to put the bishop, bishop back to is. I do have um h5 check. That is kind of interesting. I have h5 check. He blocks with bishop g6. So it's not that great. Hmm. Bishop g3 is okay. I think if I remember cor remembering correctly, the engine does recommend g3 at points uh, instead of going back to h2. I'm going to just try that. I think the reason why it likes that move is because there's still the f pawn protecting it. Okay, so he castles queenside, which is different. I think it's reasonable to push c5, right? I don't know the um, big idea with the London, if it's better to break open the pawn structure here, or if it's better to just take up more space and try to suffocate his pieces. Yeah, c5... C5 seems nice. Yeah, take or push. I don't know, what do you guys think? <laughs> Let's see, I have both of my bishops. He has both of his bishops. Removed. That's fine. I do have a really nice fork here. Yeah, the fork on e4 is really nice. Should be winning a bishop this way. I really like this bishop that that, that this bishop English that this bishop is pointing at c7. Um, I think that's going to make for some sort of nice attacks. I know I can't go queen c2 yet, but bear with me. Um, also, if I do get my queen onto a8, it is kind of just mate. Something to consider. He'll probably move his queen at that point, though. So I'll be winning a piece here. I think I'll be winning the bishop. Uh, let me think. No, he'll probably give up the knight. If he takes the knight, or excuse me, if he lets me take the knight, it'll actually be pretty nice because um, he might take with the queen just so he keeps his pawn structure. Um, but the problem with that is that I'm basically threatening with mate and one on queen c1 if he takes with the queen. Yeah, okay, so he went for that. So I know the pawn is going to be lost here, but I do have mate and one on uh, c1 here, so I feel like I'm kind of obligated to go for it. I hope he takes the pawn. I hope he takes the bait here. Okay, that's a good move. Probably reasonable to just start trading off. Okay. 
That's fine. Need to be mindful of this threat here. Also, I still haven't castled, so I just need to be a bit more mindful. I'm kind of tempted to sack this bishop. Can, I can protect this pawn. Either with the knight, um, I could try pushing the queen up, sort of maintaining the pin. I can try to get the rook out. Hmm. I've already moved the knight around a bit. I think I'm just going to try harassing this file as much as I can. Also, maybe it's worth just trading off. Just trading queens off here. Since I'm already up. Maybe it's worth it, honestly. I think it'd be better to trade on c4 with the knight, since the knight is only defended by the king. If I push queen c5, if I push queen c5, we trade, trade, and then I guess he could take a knight, but uh, he would take with the rook, and he would be down in that case, but I would lose my castling rights. But, um... I'm just gonna go for it. Plus, this attacks his rook right after that move as well. Hmm, I see. Hmm. Takes the pawn. Yeah, I guess that's that's probably better for him, huh? Hmm. Probably no reason to overthink that. I didn't really think that all the way through. I figured he would have just traded queens off. That was kind of dumb. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. I'll probably trade the rooks off, uh, at least try to trade them off on D1 here. I think he's hoping that I take or I uh, defend with the rook here, but obviously we can't do that. Hopefully this is not a misplay. If there's ever going to be a time to castle, it's now. Hmm. 
Maybe I just trade the rooks off and then try to take. Mm, maybe I just try to take trade the rooks off and get the other rook out. Well, this is just a fair trade. Um, let's see. I don't want to lose that pawn. Could protect this way, go for the check. That'd be kind of interesting. I'm actually okay with this move. Need to be mindful of this diagonal here. I think he'll defend this pawn here. I, th I think he'll notice. Yeah, he noticed. Well, I could try to add some more pressure. This would be a nice fork. <laughs> it's going to take a while to get there, but... Uh, E1. Trade. Trade. I lose a pawn here. That's the that's the main problem here. I don't know if I'm ready to lose a pawn. Maybe I just go attack the rook. I don't want to lose this pawn quite yet. I think I need to attack the rook, right? Yeah, because if we trade. Well, he's going to take. And I suppose I could push a1. Mm, maybe I just do that. So take, takes g8. Then we move over a1. Mm, let's do that. Yeah, okay. So now we can protect a1. Also a nice fork here. But uh, I'll protect A1. Why not? Okay, probably time to start getting the knight into the mix. A bit more active. See if I can try to scope one of these pawns off. I don't want to give up this pawn. It's going to be an even position if we trade rooks off here. That's why I'm really hesitant to do it. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> uh at least at least there wasn't the queen. <laughs> oh, never show this video to anyone. <laughs> never show this video to anyone. No. <laughs> oh boy, that's rough, man. That is rough. Oh man, way to throw away the advantage. Oh, that feels so bad, bro. Um, big idea here.
Oh, I feel so stupid for putting that knight on h4. Oh well, what can you do? Damn. <laughs> I mean, it feels bad. I was up two points of material, now I'm down two points of material. But it's okay. I still think it's winnable. Maybe I just unpin this pawn at this point. Or not unpin, but sort of remove the attacker from it. Oh no! <laughs> I'm playing like a fool. Oh no. Oh, he missed it. He missed the free G2 pawn. Oh, I'm playing like a fool. Oh, I did just have a free pawn there too. Damn. So I can either I can either go defend this. Actually, even if he takes, I have enough pawns to take here. So this e uh, rook is really let's think he just has two attackers here. I basically have three defenders. So I'm fine to just take this pawn. Yeah, he really could have wiped me out if he'd taken that G pawn. Also, this pawn is basically free at this point. I think I need to move my king back and just protect all these pawns. I need to maintain the defender on this A pawn too. Yeah, I think I have to move the king back. Uh, what does that do? I do have a check. It doesn't really do anything. He's prevent trying to prevent me from getting on this rank here. I could squeeze my king over here. He'll probably move his rook. Uh, I'm just going to go protect all three pawns. Oh, I probably should have just taken that pawn. Now, what am I thinking? Yeah, why didn't I just take that? Hmm. Maybe I'll take it on the next move. Okay, definitely making some mistakes this game, but I still think it's winnable. This would have been so much easier if I just had the knight and not hung it. I think I could have moved it almost anywhere else. I think there was two other squares I could have moved it to and it would have been fine. Uh, free pawn? Okay. I do have a check, but what do I accomplish here? I go that way. Probably attack the H pawn. He's going to have check. I'm going to be forced to go to E5. I think he's going to look for check. I'm just going to go E5. Oh, he goes that way. Oh, okay, that's fine. Hmm, I wonder. Do I stay near the pawns or do I start to attack his? <clears throat> I think I'm just going to run my king up into his business. There's a free pawn here. I also have a free pawn.
think he should take the F1. <clears throat> Well, we're evened up. <laughs> this would have been so much easier with the knight. Man. At least it's not a queen, though. We're getting better on this channel. Maybe he should push the G pawn and protect the H pawn. That's just an idea. If he checks me with the rook, I just take. So he has to be really careful here. I think that move was just too passive. I think what he's trying to do is to get my king to run this way, but. I don't think it's going to work. I'm going to be able to hide behind the, the pawn eventually. So I think the pieces are just more valuable here. Okay, he'll probably take that pawn now. Um, I'm almost tempted to just go defend that one. I can either push up or defend. I think I have to push up here. I could take another one, but he takes this one, and then I, it's going to break the pawn structure. I'm tempted to take to push up here. Maybe I should have just taken the pawn, I don't know. Ah, that sucks. Uh. Well, I don't think this is the end of the world. I'm attacking his rook. If he checks me, I just take the rook. Fine to just trade off here. He's going to win the H rook here. I guess we'll just trade off. Oh well. This is a little bit problematic. I don't know if I'm going to be able to run behind his king here. Also, he's kind of just winning this pawn now too, but I still have defense here. So I don't think I want to run towards this king because he has like all these squares protected. So I think my best hope is to run this way. Interesting. Well, that lets me advance a pawn. I think he should have taken on the H, the H pawn there.
I don't think I can save this pawn. I think this is the only way I can save it. I'm gonna trade off. Hmm. I'll trade off. Sure. They'll probably defend. I figured that. I have to convert one of these pawns. <clears throat> I think my best bet is just trying to run this one up the board. I can look for check. He's going to stop it, but then I can at least use my king to take these. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to defend there. Maybe I should try to attack these. Hmm. If I lose this pawn, maybe I just maybe I just give this one up and just try to take these two so he can't convert. I think I'm just gonna do that. I'll give this one up in favor of these two. If he goes and defends, I'll just push up. No, uh, no, I can't push up. Really, it just doesn't seem like the right move, but. Um, I don't know. That seemed like a mistake. <laughs> Let's just buy some time. I'll offer the trade here next. Probably time to push a pawn here. Yeah, if we trade off, uh, that's not going to be great here. So I need to push this pawn, I feel. He'll probably... No, he's not going to attack. My king's in a good spot. Mm. He might look for the check here. Probably be forced back to run and like push a pawn up. The G file. Oh man, I'm getting like sweaty about this game. <laughs> I don't want to do something stupid. I think his best bet is just to check here. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Mm. Just gonna continue to check him. Well, this is defended both ways, so. Mm. Do I push the pawn up?
Oh, I'm getting closer and closer. That loses a pawn. Might have to like sack a pawn at some point. Maybe that's the idea. He could probably move his king over to the F file at this point. Maybe I just have to move my rook like to the other side of the board. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to sack a pawn at some point. Move the rook sort of far away just so my king can whatever you call it, interweave between the pawns or something, because right now the rook is taking up space. Hmm. Kind of getting into like a stalemate position, but I think I have to... Oh. Ugh. Really? Man, I didn't think that was going to be a draw by repetition. Oh, does it actually tell you? I'll have to go watch the video back. It doesn't actually show you these repetitive moves, does it? Oh, feels bad. Man, I really feel like I should have been able to convert that somehow. I think I needed to get it. I think I needed to get the rook on the other other side of the board. And start look and just disconnect the rook away from sort of the king and pawn structure there. I'm really curious about that. Um, I just want to see what the move should have been. Oh, so he find the draw. He found the draw there. I need to watch the video and see if these actually show up in the moves during the game because I didn't notice them. But what should have been the move here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so getting the rook out of the way. Oh, right, so I could have just cut his king off. And then I could have moved everything here. Oh, yeah. Right, so I could have cut his king off. And then moving these pawns and the king would have just been pretty straightforward. Right. Okay, well, here's what I want to do. Um, how do I want to do this? I obviously know that getting rid of the knight on this square was just a bad idea. Um, <laughs> I'm punching myself for that, but anyways, let's just take it from the top. Okay, d4, c, what was it? Uh, c, f4. E3, all good so far. Yeah, so it looks like I should have played C4 a lot sooner. It's like a common theme I'm finding in the London. I don't like to trade light square bishops off in the London. Um, it seems like the idea is to keep the light square bishops since all the, the main pawns are on dark squares. So that's my motivation for keeping the light square bishop at least. So c4 was eventually the good move. Okay, I guess in this particular case, moving back to h2 was the big idea. You can win a bishop with a fork, very nice, yeah. Uh, so getting the rook out. Sure. Should have gotten the rook out instead. Okay. Yeah, trading off was fine there. I I don't feel like this is a blunder, but I feel like it's just a poor move because I just did not account for the fact of him taking this pawn and just losing one point of advantage, or I guess one material point of advantage, rather. So yeah, defending with the knight, uh, defending the pawn with the knight would have just been smarter here. 
Okay, attack the rook. Attack the rook. Good move, good move. Oh, interesting. C4. I guess it really wants to like maintain the pin on the pawn or something. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, right. Take with the bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. A4. Yeah, C4. I did like the C4 move. I thought that was pretty good. Um, That was sort of a nice find. I felt like it threatens check. It's defended. And then it defends this pawn without having to move the rook. So I just, I don't know, I liked c4 as a move. It was, I feel like it was a nice find. Trading offs here seemed okay. Yeah, I did consider b3. Um, So if we trade this way, it at least gets the pawn out of harm's way. Only thing I didn't really like about this was getting the pawn on the b file. um, Just because it was staring at another pawn. So I kind of wanted to keep the pawn on the open a file. G8 was fine. I guess pushing up to C2 was the idea. I preferred to keep the rooks connected. And then sort of the blunder of the century here. Yeah, what can you do? It happens. At least it wasn't a queen. I'm getting better. I haven't blundered a queen in a really long time, so you guys have to understand. I'm pretty happy about that. That was a decent move. Yeah, this was a really big blunder too. Um, fortunately, he didn't see it. But I felt like he could have ended this a lot sooner if he had just noticed uh, the g-pawn. So, no worries. Yeah, moving the king back. Yeah. He gave up a pawn here. Also, I felt like in this position I should have... Well, no, I couldn't quite take. But in this position, I should have just taken the pawn. Yeah, it was just so easy. Uh, I missed that key moment there that was just a free free uh free pawn yeah he also missed another free pawn here uh he missed like two free pawns so i think he could have ended a lot sooner i didn't think this was like the worst move let me kind of play this out, because what I was picturing was him just laddering these rooks, and then my king kind of ended in, ending up over here somewhere. So this is what I was expecting from him. Um, something like... Uh, I guess what would the next move be? No? So what would he play here? Rookie 3? Okay. Then I have to go basically back. Okay, and h4, yeah, protect. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so I guess he couldn't have driven me sort of into this corner here. That's kind of what I was expecting to happen, but I guess because his rook was butting into his uh, c7 pawn there, it wasn't going to happen. Okay, good to know. There was a moment to punish your opponent's error, but you let it pass. You permitted the opponent to take an open file. And what could I have done here instead? Rook a3. Oh, right. Just defend. Even then, couldn't he just win? Wasn't he still up here? Doesn't he come out, come out ahead on that trade? Oh no, I guess... Hold on. I'm up one. Right. He could have won a pawn that way too, right? Okay. Um, F4. I don't fully understand why F4 was like so bad, but that's cool. Yeah, I thought the trade was the way to go. 
Defending this way? Okay, sure. Yeah, from here, I just shouldn't have lost. I mean, I was up two pawns, so I, I, should, I should have been able to convert this, but... It's just, yeah. I had the wrong idea. I was keeping the rook too close to this structure, and I was allowing the king to come closer and closer, uh, and I let the king get on the f-file. But really here, the idea should have been to just cut off the king from um, the f, g, and h files. So that's totally my bad. Or yeah, even this way. Stopping the king from sort of moving downwards. Right, because the king would have been forced to make sort of these awkward like moves around into this structure. And I could have just kept on moving this rook back and forth. Yeah, so kind of some blunders there. Moving the rook up. Yeah, it's my first time playing this kind of specific end game where it's a, a rook and two pawns versus a rook. Um, I've never played an end game like this before, so it's just a bit of a learning experience to me. But then, yeah, I just ended on a draw, so not the end of the world, but yeah, sucks to end the game on the draw, but um, definitely some lessons here. I think my biggest lesson from this game, like my biggest takeaway is just to think about cutting the king off and then advancing the pawns forward. So, yeah. I mean, I definitely made a big mistake in this game, but the opponent also made a handful of mistakes and he was um, not punishing my mistakes as much as he could have, besides the one blunder. Um, like, he had a lot of opportunities to take free pawns, um, and fortunately he didn't find those, so it gave me some chance, but yeah, I just wasn't able to convert it in the end, so... Oh, well, it happens. Unfortunate that it's a draw, but, uh, you know, you learn to move on. But yeah, thanks guys for watching, and uh, see you in the next one.